The new Innistrad Full Art Lens. They look nice, but should you be buying them as an investment? Welcome back to my channel. I am Matt Caster Mage, and I do make Magic the Gathering content every single day. So if you do enjoy my videos, please hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. That way you will be notified for future uploads. Innistrad, yeah, it's, uh, it's coming out in a few months, but we're still getting spoilers right now. Even though we just got Dungeons & Dragons, it's like the first week the set's out, we're already getting leaked spoilers. Well, it's almost like they want to shift some of that attention, some of that negative attention that Adventures of the Forgotten Realm is getting, in towards spoilers for the new set. And yes, especially the Full Art Lands, they have released a few other spoilers as well on top of that, but I just want to focus on the Full Art Lands in this video and do a little brief history lesson on Full Art Lands and talk about their prices throughout history. So a lot of people enjoy these Full Art Lands when they were leaked, and yeah, I think they look great as well. Uh, a part of me feels, however, though, that Full Art Lands are a little overdone. Now, the first Full Art Lands that were released were in one of the unsets, and it kind of became a staple because the next Full Art Lands that we got were also, you know, some of the unlands as well. It was Unhinged was the second time we got it. And if you actually look at the prices, they were very expensive at one point. Upwards, especially the island, was upwards of $20, right? And then now, it's below 10 Why? Well, it could be the very, very oversaturated market now in Magic Gathering Full Art Lands. It feels like almost every other set is going to have Full Art Lands. And the first set to have them after the Unhinged set was Zendikar, the original Zendikar. And they were very beautiful. Uh, they went up to almost $2, even though you can get them in every single pack. They really pushed the booster box prices up. That and the fetch lands, obviously, in general, it's a fantastic set. And they were very desirable. But what ended up happening is, okay, a few years later, Wizards of the Coast sees that and they see the secondary market and apparently they don't look at it and they say, okay, why don't we do another Zendikar set? And we revisit that plane and we have Full Art Lands in that set as well. So that's what they did. And you know what? People are like, okay, these are, they look almost the same. It's just slightly different on the frame. And they held pretty steady at release. Then they just kind of drop, 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 drop. And now they're like, what, the, the island uh, is around 20 cents or something like that? Yeah, really took a hit. And then after that, they had they just kept doing it. It just felt like it was every other set. It was like Amonkhet had it. Hour of Devastation had Full Art Lands. Then after that, you had another unset. We had Unstable. And Unstable, uh, that's probably one of, It's funny, it's called Unstable. That's probably one of the most stable prices for Full Art Lands that we've seen were the Unstable Islands. It's actually doing pretty good. It's doing all right. I mean, it's not... It's still not at its all-time highs, but when it comes to Full Art Lands, those ones, like, for whatever reason, the Unstable ones seem to be like turning into like the pinnacle of like what players want for their Full Art Lands. So after that set, we ended up getting more Full Art Lands like, like we would in Theros Beyond Death. And you know what? Those ones are actually going up. Those are one of the only lands that I've seen. If you look at the chart, they are actually going up. Could be because they're very, very unique. Um, nothing like anything we've seen in Magic forever, pretty much. It's like, it kind of almost looks like Pokemon like energy cards, but uh, that's a whole other discussion. I might, I might have even already talked about that. The next one was uh, obviously Zendikar Rising. We ended up getting Full Art Lands in that as well. And they looked literally identical to BFC and Zendikar, and there's nothing special about them. Uh, the prices of those are like, what, 15 cents, 20 cents around there? Similar to Battle for Zendikar, but even a little bit cheaper than that even, because you could also get the foil full art versions of those in collector boosters. So after you have this set coming out, and you get Full Art Lands in that, it's people that are like, well, can we get a breather here for a second? And Wizards like, yeah, yeah, we'll give you like a year, maybe, maybe. And now we have Innistrad uh, with Full Art Lands as well. Oh my god, I almost forgot about the other unsanctioned Full Art Lands. See how many, un there's so many. There's so many Full Art Lands, I, I can't even keep track of this. But obviously, these ones, yes, they are a little bit unique, but how unique are they? Are they going to be investable in the future? You know, they look a little bit like the sketch cards that we got in Modern Horizons 2. Maybe they actually, uh, they came up with them around the same time they were designing that set. Uh, but yeah, I do think they'll look good in foil. But remember, you're probably going to get these in full art foil in almost every single collector booster pack. And you, I think, as far as I know, you're going to get these in every single pack. As far as I know. Maybe maybe not. Um, but uh, it's they're probably not going to be investable. And yes, they are unique. They could go the route of Theros beyond death, they, they seem to actually be on the upper trajectory. But overall, 
I don't think full art lands are really that investable. I think they're they look good if you want to throw them in a dex. You know, wait for there to be a bit of a retracement in prices because even if there's a lot of hype for these lands at the beginning, I think that the prices are going to drop like a rock, and they may actually just continue to going on that bearish trend like Zendikar Rising Lands and like Battle for Zendikar as well. Anyways, that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. Let me know what you think of these full art lands down in the comment section below. I do read every single comment that you guys share on my channel, so please leave them there and I will read them. Anyways, I do make these videos every single day, so I will see you again tomorrow for another Magic the Gathering video. Being a patron will help me produce more market movers and add to the funds that I will use for my random buys and also to my coffee fund because I drink a lot of coffee for these videos. And here you can see a link below in the description that will give you all the tiers and what you get in each tier. So I hope you guys click and think about joining. And with that, I'll see you next video. Think about uh, supporting the channel in that way. If not, subscribe, like, leave a comment, and I will see you again in the next video.